Finally, is adding detail to custom objects. This is our tip of the week. Let's talk a little bit about how that works. So if you've not created custom objects before, I talked about this in a couple of lessons uh, a couple, about a month ago. When you create custom objects, you're going to use uh, some of the typical uh, uh, ARCHICAD modeling components, such as a slab tool or a wall tool or a column tool to begin to build elements, right? Or you might use the beam tool or the roof tool. So whenever we create custom objects, these objects are created using standard tools in ARCHICAD, or depending upon what we're trying to create. So similar to our SEOs, it's really important to make a layer where we create our custom objects. So in this case, I would recommend you create a layer called object development. I would put an X in front of it or a Z in front of it, so it always goes to the end of the list. And then you could also create an object development layer combination uh, so that basically you turn every all layers are off for this layer combination with the exception of the object development layer. So whenever I select this layer combination, it will turn on the object development layer and turn off all other layers. So the example I'm going to show you here is a, uh, a railing. And while we have a railing tool, sometimes we have custom railings we need to create, in this case from an historical um, library that one of my clients did. And it's more difficult to do in a, in a typical uh, railing, um, using a typical uh, railing tool. So in this case, I could create these as individual elements and then just put them together, which is exactly the same way that the railing was created in this library. So what this particular client did is they uh, had some uh, files, or not files, they were actually original drawings of this historic building um, showing the railing. And so they basically scanned that, uh, overlaid it, uh, took it, this scan into ARCHICAD and used it as a background to then draw some line work here. Uh, you could also merge that in using the DWG files. If you wanted to merge in some DWGs uh, as a background, you could also bring those in to create your, um, uh, your, your line work as well. Once you have that line work, you can then start to use, in this case, the wall tool to start to draw, for example, um, our top railing here. So this, this railing um, component. Uh, you can also use the wall tool or the slab tool to start creating uh, the railing components inside the line work here. Obviously, it would take a little while to do that because we've got a lot of intricacy here. But the nice thing is if you already have the, the line work done, you could actually just zoom in, use your magic wand tool, snap into it, and it will start to fill in a lot of the line work automatically with the slab, with the, the wall tool, so you don't have to draw as much in here as well. You can then assign materials. So if I wanted the uh, top of the railing to be, say, wood oak, and I wanted this to be iron down here, or whatever material that might be, I could set that specifically uh, and individually as well. Once you've created that railing uh, component, you're then going to want to, to rotate that to a view that you want to see in floor plan. So for example, if I want to rotate, since I would probably be drawing this in my floor plan view, uh, so it's kind of laid down. I always tell people to kind of model as if it was laying down on a workbench, and then you'll rotate it back, rotate it up when you save it as the object. So in this case, we're going to draw it in the floor plan as if it's sitting on the workbench, right? And so I'm going to rotate my elevation. I want to see the top of this railing, right? That's what I want to see uh, when I save it in my floor plan. So I'm going to open up my uh, 3D projection settings dialog here. Uh, if it's not in parallel projection settings by default, you'll see a parallel projection settings button. We'll click that. It'll change from perspective to parallel. And then in our parallel projections, we can click this button here to change it from a 3D um, view to a, um, or a 3D axonometric view to a side view. Okay, in which case it's going to it's going to change uh, this. Uh, to show the floor plan view here. And I can then gra grab my uh, camera here and I can rotate it around so it's at the top of the elevation. So again, it's like this, it's sitting on the workbench, right? I wanna see this elevation of the top 
of my railing. And when I do that, and I go, okay, I'm going to see this in my uh, floor plan view. Or excuse me, in my 3D view, as if I'm looking at it from the floor plan view. And so at this point, I need to select all. Okay, that's very important. If you don't select all and you go to file, save as an object, it's not gonna, it's gonna be grayed out because it has nothing, you, you haven't selected anything that to save. So in this case, uh, I, I wrote to that view, I select all, and then I'm gonna go to my file menu, libraries and objects, say selection as, object, I'm gonna type in custom rail design or whatever name you wanna give that rail. And then once you save that, it becomes part of your embedded library or external library. And then you can start to put those pieces together to create a real line that is a nice consistent piece together. Uh, in this case, obviously they had not just one piece, they had like an end rail, they had different components in between. Um, so it was really a nice way of taking an existing system and putting that together to create uh, a custom rail. And that is our tip of the week.